uses him. Then Elisha goes to Damascus. And while he's in Damascus, the, the king of, of Syria is ill, Ben-Hadad, King Ben-Hadad. And he sends a servant, one of his servants, to go and see the holy man, to see the prophet. And he says, ask the prophet, am I going to die? I know the feeling, you know, when you're, you're ill. I know you think you're going to die. Well, anyway, that's how the king was feeling. So the servant goes to see Elisha and he says to Elisha, is, is what's going to happen? And, and he brings gifts, 40 camel loads, I think it says. Yeah, 40 camel loads of gifts. That's a lot of stuff from Argos that he had to pack in there. And Elisha seems to accept this because sometimes he doesn't. So he takes it, maybe it's because he's not actually doing anything. I'll have the gifts because I'm not doing anything. If God's doing it, I don't want it, but I'm not. And he says to Hazael, who is the servant, well, it's one of the chiefs that um, the king sends. He says to him, uh, go and tell your king, don't worry, you'll live. And then he basically says, narrator's voice, he says this, he says narrator's voice. Um, Actually, he's doomed, God's told me. But don't tell him that, just tell him he's going to live. And Elisha then stares hard at Hazael. And his face drops because he sees the horror of Hazael's future. And Hazael says to him, well, what's wrong? What, what, what are you looking at? What's going on? And Elisha says, I've seen what you're going to do. It's, it's, and, and it's breaking my heart. You're going you're gonna to destroy Israel. You're going to kill loads of people. And Hazael goes, I'm not like that. That's that's not me. That's not me. I'm, I'm going to be fine. And then Elisha says to him, well, God's shown me that you are going to be king of Syria. Well, Hazael goes, I mean, probably scratching his head thinking, well, that's a bit weird. And he goes to the king, Ben-Hadad, and the king says, well, what did Elisha tell you? And uh, Hazael says, um, he said, everything's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. But that night, Hazael gets a quilt, a cloth, and soaks it in water, and he suffocates the king. And then Hazael became king of Syria. Well, that's not all. There is more. Because kings come and go and the king of Judah, become Ahaziah, becomes friends or is friends with the king of Israel. And if you remember, if you remember way back, is Joram. I better double check this because I'm telling the story. Let's just, just check I've got it right. Yes, yes, son. It gets confusing with the names, doesn't it? So anyway, Ahaziah becomes his friend. Now, it's not Jehor, it's Jehu. Oh, no, it's not. Sorry, I got confused myself there. So Joram um, is, is fighting, and sometimes they fight with, in alliance with, uh, the king of Judah. I hope you're following this. Anyway, this is where it starts to get interesting again, because Elisha talks to his prophets. There's this guild of prophets knocking around, and Elisha tells one of them, he says, get yourself together, get a flask of oil, and go to Gilead, and look for Jehu, who's the son of Jehoshaphat, who's the son of Nimshi. You don't need to remember those details. He says, when you find him, take him to one side, open the door, and then anoint Jehu as the next king of Israel. Then run for it. And the prophet's like, OK, <laughs> I'm a prophet. Got to do as the chief prophet says. So he travels to Gilead. And he goes to the, the garrison where the army officers are. And he says, um, I got some business uh, with you, officer. And Jehu says, which one of us? And he, and he goes, you. Yeah, you, Jehu. Can we, can we have a word out the back? So they go out the back. Jehu makes sure the door isn't locked. And he says, this is God's word. You are to be anointed the next king of Israel. And he anoints Jehu with oil. Then he opens the door and he runs for it. He says a few other words before he leaves about war. And he says how Ahab's family 
and family line are going to be wiped out and how Jezebel is going to be eaten by dogs. Anyway, Jehu goes back to the um, other officers and they go, what was that all about? And he goes, well, you, I don't know. You know, you know, these crazy, these prophets, they're mad. They, what's going on? And they say, well, what did he say? What did he say? And Jehu says, well, he said, he can't really cover this up. His head's covered with oil. He says, well, he said, I'm going to be the next king of Israel. And the officers looked at each other and they go, okay. And that starts the conspiracy or the revolution when Jehu starts to become the king. Now, meanwhile, Marzoe Joram, who was the king, was defending um, Gilead against Hazael, funnily enough, um, who was the new king of Syria. But he'd been injured, so he had to withdraw in order to, to, to get better, to heal. Now, Jehu says, if you really want me to be the king to his officers, don't let anyone know. Don't let anyone sneak out of the city. We have to do this carefully. So he gathers his army and he travels, or his allies, Jehu does, and he starts traveling towards the place where the king is. Now, there's a king um, on the watchtower because um, Joram had retreated to a place called Jezreel, if you the detail so anyway so he's looking from Jezreel and, and the sentry says there's someone coming and the king goes well who is it what do they want send send a rider out send a horseman out so they send out a rider and the rider goes up oh it's Jehu he says you're right what's going on what's the problem and Jehu says what's it got to do with you what the problem is get in line and the rider gets in line now, the sentry is watching from a distance and he can, he can see some goings on. And he says, well, we've sent him out, but he's, he's not come back. And the king, Joram, says, well, well, send the next one. Send another one out. See what he says. So he's sending out a second rider and the rider rides out. And he goes, oh, it's, it's Jehu. Hello. What's, what's wrong? What's going on? And Jehu says to him, what's got to do with you? What is wrong? Get in line. And the rider falls in into line behind Jehu's other allies. Now the sentry is looking out and he sees this going on and, he's, and he says to the king, I can't, he, he's falling out. I can't see who it is. It looks like the way he's driving, this is literally it. The way he's driving, it looks like it's Jehu because he's crazy, isn't he? He's crazy in them chariots. So the king goes, well, get my chariot ready and let's um, let's go out. Let's go out and meet him. So Joram, the king, gets in his chariot and he says to ah Ahazia, who is the um, the, Jude, the king of Judah with him. I hope you're following all this. Anyway, and they both ride out towards Jehu and his little army. And they say, what's wrong, Jehu? says John what's going on you know because he, he was one of his commanders he says what's going on and Jehu says you know what's going on on the way that you behave and your parents and your grandparents the way that you've turned away from God and brought all this wrong into Israel and Jehu realizes it's a trap and he wheels his chariot round, starts to drive off but Jehu is ahead of him and he pulls back his bow and he shoots and he gets Joram right between the shoulder blades, right the way through and pierces his heart. And Jor Joram falls in his chariot and the chariot comes to a halt. And here's one of them twists in the story because the chariot comes to a halt on the piece of land that was known as Naboth's vineyard. And Jehu says, throw his body out onto the vineyard and the dogs can have it. So they throw his body onto the ground. And you may well remember, Naboth's vineyard was a vineyard that had been taken by Ahab and Jezebel for the king. They'd stolen it. They'd, they'd arranged for the death of Naboth. And Elijah had said, this isn't going to go well for you.
Now the king of Judah, Ahaziah, he is much distressed <laughs> to see all this going on. He's just seen his mate assassinated and he starts to ride off. But And Jehu says, get him too. So his archers fire or shoot at uh, Ahaziah and they wound him. He gets as far as Megiddo. And that's as far as he gets before his injuries get the worst of him. And Ahaziah, king of Judah, dies and is taken back home and buried in the tomb of his ancestors.